So here we have open grade system, as you can see. Easy to get your product in, minimal compaction, free draining, less chance of efflorescence. A lot of advantages to a system like this. You can see our woven geotextile fabric here, adding the support and stability. Again, some prefer a felt. We prefer the woven, a little bit more tensile strength with the woven product. Coming down through here, there's gonna be a nice front walkway. It's gonna be a beautiful spot here, a little back patio area. Be a set of stairs coming down in this lower area. What we got here is pretty unique. We're gonna have a, a sunken area there, which is a walkout. Um, but there's all drainage in there. And this is one of those areas we're talking about where you get to where you can't create an underground pond or bath um, in your soil. So this area, there's a drain pipe that actually goes in and it goes out. You can see the set of forks on the far side. So there's a drain pipe that we tied into there and then that runs out. So your subsoils are drained. For the surface, you can see we have our patio drain there, the adjustable drain which is very easy and efficiently installed. You can see there, quick up and down now, the guys just got that drain in there quickly. And now once they lay their pavers, they'll be able to go back through with either a ratchet or a screw gun and be able to go up and down with that drain to get their exact height. So a lot of unique things happening on this project. So there's a couple of those things we really wanted to point out. So today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about open grade base and what I've labeled as hybrid pavement. So I'm going to go through the step by step, the A to Z process of building a hybrid pavement. And basically what it is, is just your clean stone, your number eight stone for a setting bed, laying your pavers, cutting, fitting, hybrid edging on the edges, and then sweeping in with your polymeric sand. But I've had a lot of questions as far as what the actual steps are. So today I thought I'd go through that and I thought I'd do it just on this easel that I could draw it just quickly and easily so that we can cover all the bases of the steps and really um, lay it out for you very clearly. So for starters, if this is our, this is a side profile, I'm, I'm going to look at the side of the home. This is my back of my house here. This is my roof. Okay. I'm going to come out here onto my um, back patio and say this is elevation now which I'll do just here lightly in green. So this is my existing elevation. This is my lawn. I'm going to do a dig out here. And generally, what I'd like to do is dig down about 10, 12 inches. I'm in Connecticut. Um, we deal with a, quite a bit of frost. If we can get down that distance, that's going to eliminate some of that freeze thaw down into our subsoil. So I'm going to dig down here about 12 inches of excavation. This is up against the home. All right. Now, one thing we're going to look at, this is about level right now. So one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure we have positive flow away from the home. So you're going to want at least a 3% pitch um, coming away from here. So again, we're going to want to probably drop this down a little bit. The last thing we want is water sitting up against our home here. If you have a serious water issue, this might be an application you want to do, say, like a pond liner coming out here. Um, you could do a, a bit of uh, processed gravel, so a dense grade base here that will automatically push your water away. But this is, a, this is an area here you want to really pay attention to. Make sure you don't have any water sitting against where it's going to penetrate your foundation. Again, most likely your foundation is here, right, and then your framing is up from here. Your door is here. So anyway, we got this dug out, right? And what I generally do is we generally go a foot beyond our base. If I'm doing a four foot walkway, I automatically dig out six feet. It gives me a foot of base on both sides of my walkway. That's going to allow us to give us some wiggle room. We start laying out those nice flowing curves. It gives us that little bit of play. Same thing on a back patio. I go a foot beyond with my base. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric and I'll just do fabric here. I'm going to envelop the entire sub base. I'm going to ramp up with my, my fabric there, all along my base, like that with my fabric. And I'm just going to take one step back really quick, like I have pitch out of here. If we're dealing with clay soils, I want to make sure at this lowest point, I have a way for my water to get out. Last thing we want is to create like a bathtub 
in our backyard where this here is just going to fill, fill, fill up with water until it has a point to drain out. We do not want that. We want the water to get out here. So even at your lowest point, if you have to continue, if your lawn does this and then it slopes off, we could put in a pipe at this point and we can run this out to daylight so that at this point the water can get out. You can do a pipe, you can just do a French drain where this is filled in with crushed stone, cover it with a piece of fabric. We want to make sure this water has a low spot to exit out of. So we're not again filling this up with water. So I just wanted to point that out. That is crucial. We don't want to create this where this is all sun saturated with water at all the time where this could get spongy and become unstable our fabric or with our soils. So again, fabric in here right envelop up the sides and then what we're going to do is we're going to come in with our machine and we're going to dump our clean stone and again that's an ASTM number 57 that's your three-quarter clean stone and again it's crushed stone so it's very angular it's going to it has a um, angular um, shape to it so it interlocks and when you compact it then which needs very little compaction there's some um, that would say you need no compaction. They say dumped out of a truck is 95%. I do like to run a compactor over. It just kind of consolidates all the void spaces, and just locks together. But again, you're using light compaction equipment. You're not using your big forward reversing plates or you're not using a big roller. So again, we're going to fill this entire area in with that three quarter, right? All the way through here, all the way here. You're going to fill all that in. And generally, if you're doing like a 60 mil paver, you're going to keep the top of this stone down about um, three inches from finished grade. And then what we're going to do after that's done is we're going to put in our, our screet rails. Right? So our screet rails will go in here at this point. One inch screet rails. Two of them. And we'll set our, our screet around there, and we're going to screet out number eight stone or number nine so that's your three eighths chip stone so again a very angular stone that's going to lock together we're going to screech that three eighths stone out on the whole thing and after we're done screeching again and this here i would probably if you can put pitch on it you're going to want the water to get off there at some point um even your permeable systems they do require some maintenance so you're going to get your you're going to get your um you know, your pollen, that kind of stuff blowing into your joints, and eventually it does, it does clog up those pores a little bit. If you want to eliminate that, put some pitch on this. It again will be permeable, so water can again dissipate down through it. But we like to get in the habit of just putting pit, uh, just a little bit of pitch on it, get your water out of there. Screed it, and then you're going to lay your pavers. Everything gets laid, right? You're going to lay your entire patio um, on top of that. And then what we do on top of that, once we're done cutting, then we put in our edging. So we get our hybrid edge. We're going to use our hybrid edging with our hybrid stake on the outside edge. So again, going down through. This is designed to go down through clean stone. That's what this edging is designed for. It also has the nail pockets on it for, for a dense grade. You're going to stitch this edging every other way down to our dense grade. That's going to create that or eliminate that from the uplift. So this here grabs enough mass of three-quarter clean stone to eliminate your lateral shift. So all that will get put on the outside edges. And then we're ready to um, sweep and compact. So a lot of times what we'll do is we're going to sweep in with either your, your uh, poly sand or obviously we've done a lot with easy joint, which is a, a totally different process. Your um, polymeric sands obviously uses a poly to bind it together. Your easy joint is more of a, um, it's like an epoxy, a two-part epoxy. So when it mixes and then it becomes in contact with air, that's what cures it. So when it dries, it cures. Total opposite of what poly sand is. But either solution is what we recommend for on top then. So you're going to sweep the entire surface in quickly and then we take our roller plate compactors and we'll roll the top. You can use a poly pad with a compactor also. Do the entire surface and then we're going to do that again. We're going to sweep in either with the easy joint, washing it in, or we're going to again dust in our poly sand dry 
and compact that. So again, this is a system where you're saving a lot of time with compaction on your base. Again, just hitting it once. Um, very quick, very easy. So a lot of savings there. Um, your dense grade base, so if you have a compacted gravel, an ASTM 2940D, that's your dense grade base. If you have a 15 yard load delivered to your job site, you're going to yield only 11 and a quarter to, uh, to 11 and a half yards once that's compacted to 95%. Your clean stone, 15 yard load, is still going to yield you 14 and a quarter yards. So you can see after you know, three loads, you're going to save an entire load. So that's how much savings you have. So over a year's time, if you convert over to use an all clean stone base, you save a tremendous amount of time and labor in trucking and then also in your compacting. So if you're down a foot, you're going to maybe do two or three lifts of compacting back and forth, back and forth. With this here, you're just going to rattle it once and you're done. And again, especially I would pay attention to compacting on your edges. And again, that's why we wrap that fabric up around it and make sure that you're compacting that so that it does get tight up against your, your sub base where it comes up your, your cut. Um, so that's one big advantage. Another advantage with an open grade base, water dissipates quickly. So your water dissipates, your water gets out, less chance of efflorescence. When you have your dense grade base, your C33 sand, obviously you do retain some moisture in there. And that moisture then wicks up through the surface of your paver and that's what brings out that efflorescence, that white chalky film on top of your pavers that really has a horrific look to it. So this helps with that too. Um, again, just lots of advantages. I think um, it's something that's like anything, it takes a little bit of getting used to. But once you convert over installing this way, it really is really fast and really efficient. ICPI is at the time working on uh, writing uh, basically a recipe for this system, being able to install this way. Um, but there's so many variations and different ways that, that contractors are doing it. So right now they're studying several different projects throughout the country and ways it was installed so that they can bring to all of us as contractors the exact recipe that really leads to, to a good and productive end.